G'day everybody, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, today we're talking about functions. Yeah, this is really, really important. So part of the power of C++ and the flexibility of C++ is that the programmer can pretty much define their own language. If you don't like the way C++ works, you can, yeah, define whatever you want. Uh, we can define our own data types, our own functions. We can even redefine the operators, like plus and minus really really powerful anyway today we're talking about functions so functions are sometimes called procedures or even sub procedures uh, properly if you want to be proper about it uh, procedures don't return a value they're just a bunch of steps whereas a function does return a value okay so basically a function or a procedure is just a magic box and it takes some input which I've drawn over here on the right 119 71 42 and 12 and my function just here is find smallest and it returns the smallest of those four integers so the magic box just here does something like this this might be the code to the magic box uh, yes and it magically figures out which one of these these four is the smallest and it gives you the answer usually you'll do something slightly more useful than this but yeah that's good to know okay so once we've defined a function we call it uh, this is just this is just um, to run the code of the function. Uh, you can refer to this as calling the function, executing the function, invoking the function, or running the function. There's probably a bunch more terms too, but basically what we want to do is stop executing code line by line and jump to the code of the body of the function. So the function is another control structure, similar to loops. Yeah, but first we've got to define it. So this is how you define a function, pretty much, or this is the syntax to it. The very first thing that we do is the return type. Uh, this is just a normal data type. You know, int, char, float, double, bool. Yeah, one of those. If your function doesn't return anything, then you have to put void there. Void means nothing. Nothing at all. The function doesn't return a value. Or it's a procedure. Yeah, okay, then we've got the function name, and this is what we use to call the function later on in our other code blocks. Uh, this is a perfectly normal variable name. You can have letters, digits, underscores, uh, no spaces though, and it can't start with a number. Yeah, it has to start with a letter. After that, in brackets, we've got the parameters that the function takes, and this is the input that the function needs in order to calculate its answer. So for our main function that we've been defining, uh, it doesn't take any parameters. So we just had open and close brackets there and they were empty. But sometimes you've got to, yeah, sometimes you've got to give the function some inputs. So it's just a list, a comma separated list of a type and then a name and then a type and then a name. And these become variables within the function's body. So something like int a, int b, int c would mean that the function takes three parameters, they're all integers, and then it can use those in the body to calculate its answer. And finally we've got the body of the function itself and this is where the magic happens. This is where we define step by step exactly how the function takes its inputs and returns its answer. Okay, I don't know how confusing this slide looks but this is actually the um, diagram from earlier with that syntax that we just went through and a bunch of arrows pointing all over the place to indicate which bits are which. Uh, in red we've got the input parameters right here and the body of the function is in cyan or aquamarine and the return type or the return value is uh, orange. Yeah that's the 12 over there. Okay a slightly more concrete example uh, of a completely pointless function. This is the worst function that's ever been written. Anyway, uh, this one adds together two integers. I mean, if you were to really use this in your code, you'd just put the plus uh, symbol there, but yeah, just bear with me, bear with me. Humor me, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this function takes two integer parameters, a and b, and it returns an integer. Uh, it's called add numbers, and the body of it is pretty pointless. Uh, here is where we call the function from our main procedure. So I didn't mention just a minute ago, even though the slide said it, but um, 
C++ isn't going to execute add numbers by itself. It's only going to execute it when we call it somewhere. Uh, we know that you know Windows is going to jump straight to the main function. It's not going to execute these other functions that we put up above it. Yeah, so if it's executing main one line at a time, some of those lines might be calls to the function add numbers, like this one is. Uh, the parameters. 25 will be passed in A, and 67 will be passed in B. Uh, and then from within the body of the function, uh, 25 and 67 will just be perfectly regular variables, integer variables, A and B. So we can return A plus B. And you can call it billions of times with billions of different numbers, and the function body will always call the numbers A and B. Ah yes, the scope of the variables A and B, we've not been through scope, and we're not going to go through it now, but the scope of the variables A and B is limited to the function's body, so main has no idea that A and B exist. Likewise, if we define some variables in main, add numbers has no idea that they exist. Okay, here we've got another example. This one is um, an example about the difference between declaration and definition. Uh, let's just go. Uh, okay, so this is the declaration right here. We've declared a function, but you can actually separate it from the definition of the function. So the declaration of a function is just a promise that we've coded the function somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the the declaration of this one, sum 1 to x, uh, looks something like this. It's almost exactly the same as the heading to the function itself, or the definition of the function. Uh, there's two little differences. Number one, it ends with a semicolon, whereas uh, the definition of the function doesn't end with a semicolon. It opens up a code block. And the other def uh, difference is that you don't have to specify the variable's names in the declaration. You can if you want, but it's ignored. Yeah, the actual variables' names have to appear in the definition. Okay, right here we've got a call to our function. So once again, to call a function, you just use the function's name, and then you put the parameters that you want in brackets. Sum 1 to x, and then 100 is my parameter. Uh, but the interesting thing is that we can call this function, sum 1 to x, uh, after its declaration, but before it's actually been defined. Yeah. Okay, and right down the bottom we've actually got our definition. Uh, this is this is pretty much pointless, you know, to put it in one file like this. But later on, when we when we're making our own headers, uh, this idea really comes into its own. Okay, so the the function's definition is is where we actually specify what the function does. And like we said, it's the same as the uh, declaration, only there's a couple of minor changes. It needs the body of the function for a start. Okay, further interesting ideas. Yes, yeah, so once defined, uh, a function becomes almost exactly the same as a variable of its own return type. So if a function returns int, then we can use a call to that function wherever we can use an integer variable. If it returns double, then we can use a call to that function wherever uh, a double is required. So, uh, that means that you can use a function as a parameter to another function call. And right here I've got for an example uh, the square root function, and then I open up brackets. These two outer brackets here are the brackets to the square root function. But as a parameter I've passed uh, another function call. And C++ is going to execute this from the inside out. So sum 1 to x is going to be called first, and that's going to give us 50-50, uh, 5050. And then square root is going to calculate the square root of that and return that. Okay, so it goes from inside out. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, you can also use function calls in place of variables in looping structures. Yeah, so for int i equals 0, we're setting up a for loop here. Uh, while i is less than get max i++. Plus plus. So get max will be um, some function that I've defined somewhere that returns the uh, maximum amount that I want to count up to with i. 
Yeah, good example. Uh, and of course, also, you can use uh, function calls from within the body of other functions. So this is another example down here. We've got void some function, open close brackets. This one takes uh, no operands at all. Uh, then we open up the body of that function. But within the body of that function, we can call another function. Function, function, function. <laughs> How many times have I said function? Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is really cool too. The Visual Studio actually comes with hundreds of uh, headers that we can include in our projects. Uh, you know, you just type uh, include and then you open up those triangle brackets and you get a list from IntelliSense of hundreds of different header files that you can include in your project. Uh, these contain hundreds of functions, amongst other things. They contain objects and, and constants and things, but yeah, there's a lot a lot of uh, functions already written for us in Visual Studio or any C++ compiler. And if that's not enough, uh, there's thousands, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, headers and, and SDKs and you know things written by other people all around the world uh, that you can also use in your projects. So Basically, all I want to say is that if you use somebody else's code, it's always a really good idea to mark uh, with a comment somewhere where you got it from. Some people, you know, don't want you to use their code. Uh, obviously, you couldn't just take, say, you know, the the Microsoft Word DLL and use that. Microsoft is going to get really angry. But other people do allow you to use their code, so maybe it's under the GNU license or some other free. Uh, yeah, free use license. Like you can use my code if you want, as long as you give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can give me a thumbs down and then use my code. How yeah, rude! Uh, yeah. Anyway, you better mark in your code uh, where you got certain functions from if you use other people's code. And that's about the end. So thank you very much for listening, and uh, I'll see you next time.